Welcome back to The Magnificence of the Three. This is where we level up in consciousness and use real life experience to empower the audience by mixing spirituality and science together to get out of these fear-based beliefs and take beliefs of limitation and lock in beliefs of co-creation and expansion. I'm here with my brother from another mother, Time Out Tumua. My name is Jason Ford. I am an author, a speaker, and a conscious communications coach. And we have been covering Time Out's book, The Magnificence of the Three, which has been a great journey so far. And uh, I wanted to mention too, Time Out, you just got that book uh, listed in Harvard's library, which is awesome, man. They called it an academic piece of work. This is a guy, keep in mind, that had uh, didn't even graduate high school. And this guy has an epiphany and writes a book about the structure of the universe, the atom, and some of his claims of the evidence in the Bible that we're going to talk about today with the... Uh, the Declaration of Independence. We're going to talk about the Civil War. We're going to talk about uh, America being the new land based on his claims. Yes. So time out. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Um, I know you like to lead us out in a quick prayer. So let's do that real quick. And we'll have a, a great show today. Thank you. Good morning. Let's start our show today with a short prayer. Say, Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for adding another day to our lives. Thank you for your presence in, uh, amongst our families, our friends, and our neighbors especially ourselves thank you for choosing us to be your servants we can ask for your spirit to be with us today uh to project out uh, what we see in your word that uh, has not been discussed by the church before and we ask for your spirits to validate and uh, confirm that the message is, the message is the truth thank you Kate, for choosing us to be your servants we ask all these things in your name amen amen so time out, you mentioned we talked last week and you're like, man, I think I'm getting a little burnout out um, coming up with the material. I know it, the, the yeah. material's in depth and it probably does take a lot of mental strength and actually to put it all together on the outline. And uh, we put it all together fairly quickly. And I know with that burnout, um, you came to me earlier this week and said, you know what? I think I'm ready to go this week. And I was like, let's do it, man. If you're, if you're divinely inspired to share this message, then let's go for it. And there's one thing that I wanted to touch based on. I actually had a couple conversations about this with some people last couple days. And, you know, I, I'm very redundant about the fact that on this podcast, we're looking at different perspectives on things. That's all we're looking to do is to look for seeking truth with different perspectives so that we get out of these negative belief patterns. And the only way that we're going to get out of negative belief patterns is by not taking offense two different opinions and perspective. And I actually saw one of your shorts pop up and mm -hmm. it you had meant, I forgot we even covered this in the episode, but you said that people were kind of giving you flack saying you're anti-Semitic on this stuff. And I was like, man, I don't know how many times we have to say, I guess it doesn't matter. People are going to hear what they want to hear. And exactly. if they're looking to be offended, they're going to be offended. Will be. So they're looking for problems, they're going to get problems. But when it comes down to the material, here's my take on offense. And Rodrigo, you can make a short out of this, man, because I think this is important to know. This is where the society has gone the last few years and why we get ourselves into an entrapment of negative belief patterns because of the fact that, first of all, if you're taking offense to something, what that tells me is that you must think that there is some truth in your belief that you're taking offense to, right? Exactly. I mean, if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Jason, dude, your hair's a mess today. Well, I don't have any hair. That's not going to influence me. That's not a truth. So it's not going to affect my emotions. So I would be like, okay, dude, that's great. Move on, right? I'm not right. going to get upset about that. Number two is if you're taking offense, that also tells me that you have actually just admitted a character defect, which is you let other people dictate your emotions. That's not healthy. Caring what other people think and caring about other people are two different things. Number three is it's used today in society as a manipulative tactic. And that's because if I'm offended, I'm going to make you feel guilty for offending me because offending people is bad. Therefore, I can stick in my what might be untrue negative belief patterns to perpetuate my personal agenda without having to self-examinate self my own truths so that I shut you down immediately. That is a victim mentality. And when you are in a victim mentality, I don't say this to be condescending. I'm helping people that get offended over things because of the fact that if you recognize you get offended, you recognize you're in victim mentality, that's the only way that you're going to be able to progress and grow as a person. So I'm doing you a favor. So I guess bottom line is, I guess we could play the game of I'm offended that you're offended and go around in circles mm -hmm. with this stuff. So there's absolutely nothing that I have heard or read in your material that is anti-Semitic. I think that is people out there looking for problems. So 
I just wanted to clear the air on that and have people come in with an open mind that it's your own interpretation. We've said that over and over. So enough of that. We don't like to focus on the negative, but the positive should be is that if you've recognized your in victim mentality, guess what? Congratulations, because that is the first step of having that self-awareness of being in victim mentality that you now have the ability to start growing and getting out of limitation and start co-creating the miracles that will start happening. Yeah. So today I know you wanted to talk about the um, the promised land and the modern world, which we'd covered a little bit, but we're going to recap like we always do. And then we will get into the Declaration of Independence, uh, the Civil War, the Declaration of Independence, meaning it looks like there was probably a possibility of some sort of divine intervention with the Dec Declaration of Independence. Plus, I was thinking on the way up here when we were talking, um, Thomas Jefferson, third president, right? Right. So the number three shows up again, which you talk about over and over in the book. So I'm going to turn it over to you at this point and let you kind of recap um, your claim that God replaced the promised land of milk and honey of the Old Testament with the new land of milk and honey for his new priest, which was the Gentiles or by definition, Gentiles, non-Jewish people to include God as all of his children. So Amen. go ahead. Time out. Thank you. This uh, it's going to be a four part series because uh, we're going to uh, continue we're going to end it next week. So this week is about uh, how the evidence fell out of the Bible and landed here on earth. And my claim in the book is that God did replace the old land of milk and honey that was given to Abraham's descendants. And the reason why, because God had instructed them in the book of Leviticus 26 that once you worship idols, you're off the land. The only thing that that uh, that uh, that God had, uh, had made sure that uh, Israel understood was that they were always going to be His people, which is consistent with uh, with the task that was given to Israel originally, that they were supposed to go out to the world and spread the word, introduce God, their God, to the world. This is the only difference between them and the Gentiles and uh, and uh, Ismael's uh, descendants. God had chosen Isaac's, uh, Isaac's descendants to, uh, to uh, go out to the world and be priests and take the world, take God to the world and introduce them. This is where the blessing is supposed to come from. The blessing is supposed to come from us knowing God instead of, uh, of what the Christians to, uh, claim today that if they kill everyone on behalf of Israel, they're going to get blessed. I seriously doubt that because la, la, as I explained in the book, the tree of life is the commandments. He cannot violate it. This is why Israel ended up losing the land because they violated the commandments. That is the tree of life. And there's a reason why it is the tree of life. And uh, we're going to deal with that uh, in some episodes coming up. So today uh, we're going to we're gonna deal with, uh, we're going to provide you the evidence of my, support my claim that the new land was a, a God had appointed a new land for the Gentiles, once the Gentiles became priests, included were included in the task of priests to the world, it also came with the land. That land it was the American land. So now we're gonna we're gonna get into the evidence of how God planted the evidence of how uh, 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 to uh, to show, to prove, to record that uh, this was his original plan. This is the plan all along was uh, was to appoint a new land for uh, for for. Uh, for uh, for the Gentiles. So let me go through these real quick. Um, so let's uh, talk about, so these are your claims that God replaced the promised land of milk and honey. Uh, so Israel to uh, his new priest, which would be the Gentiles. And so you've got um, A, God first promised Israel with the land already settled by other humans. B, God then issued the Ten Commandments. Okay, C, that God ordered them to take it by force even after the Ten Commandments was issued. D, in these commandments, God forbade murders and stealing from neighbors. E is a contradiction of the order given to Israel to take the land by force. Then F, God, or, but God then issued warnings and imposed conditions on Israel for keeping the land in Leviticus 26. Next is the conditions were not to worship idols and obey these commandments. You mentioned that. And then lastly, God never retracted these conditions from Israel. That's so go it. ahead and uh, you then transition into um, 
the discussion of the claim and the stories are they we're going to go into the brain development here because i know that a lot of your book as you go through which is very interesting especially since you don't have a background in this stuff but you did it over 10 years and you studied a lot about how the bible may just be more of an allegory for brain development than anything else and perhaps the allegory if you don't take it so literal would be the brain development would be going from left to right and perhaps going from the left analytical development of the brain to the right, which is the more creative side or spiritual side, maybe that's going to heaven, is getting to the right side of the brain and brain development. So what did you want to touch on on the uh, synaptic pruning and neuroplasticity? Okay, the first piece of evidence that got planted here with the Americans was, uh, was uh, came through uh, the Declaration of Independence. Listen, often ask questions about why uh those are the, the founding fathers of the united states of america uh came up with this uh with this uh with this uh sentence in their uh, in their uh in their declaration of independence that all men were created equal they don't understand how men were owning slaves at the time came up with this uh with this uh with this quote and all of them approved of it I'm explaining the book that what happened here was exactly what uh, God was a, uh, this was an example of, uh, of what neurologists had come to, uh, to explain about uh, synaptic pruning or neuroplasticity. These are uh, two uh, uh, functions of the brain that, uh, that, uh, that's very, very interesting because through these two tools of, of the brain, uh it enables us to change our behavior for example you know you did something wrong in the past neuroplasticity uh, uh and uh, synaptic pruning allows you to uh to change your behavior and become remorseful of your uh, of your past behavior so so you're 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 doing something different something new then if you don't if you don't do what you've done in the past that you regret it Eventually, your brain will prune out that that tree, that uh, that neuron that was uh, responsible for that behavior. So, the way God designed the brain is: the more you use the behavior, the more you apply the behavior, the more strengthened the connections are that, uh, to your to the to the brain cell. And uh, so, what happened here with uh, with uh, with uh, with the founding fathers of uh, you know? of why they came up with this uh, declaration that all men were created equal, but still owning slaves was a, a, a fantastic piece of evidence of how the brain was designed. It was designed to, uh, to adjust for survival purposes. You know, you see what's wrong, you know what's wrong, and then you slowly, slowly adjust your behavior, and that's when your new, new brain cells are, are planted in your brain. So this is an example. So what went through here, this is the first thing, when uh, the first example of uh, of brain plasticity that uh, God planted here with the founding fathers, so they've done this their whole lives. And all of a sudden, one day they decided, oh, you know, all men are created equal. They don't, they didn't even realize it what they were doing. I don't think, at least that's what I claim. They didn't. This is what you call a spiritually inspired act that was done that God planted here on this land to begin the foundation of His new nation. So. So that was the first piece of evidence that I'm, I'm, I'm using is, uh, is uh, how God used the design of the brain to, uh, as an example, I mean, as a piece of, ev a piece of evidence uh, to show that this is going to be his new nation. And this is how he's going to plan, how, this is how he's going to start. He's going to start by, by pruning out old neurons from the brains that have been planted for uh, hundreds of years uh, with, sl with slave owners. It's going to start the cleaning process with the founding fathers, and this is why let, they ended up coming up with that, uh, with that, uh, that, that, that paragraph, that sentence in, uh, where men are all created equal. And it's kind of like a detox that happens in, um, you know, something even like addiction where the behaviors typically don't change right away. Uh, it's like the brain has to be reformed, rewired. And I know like both of us, for example, um, going through recovery because we struggled with, uh, with alcoholism at some point. It, uh, it gets to the point you talked about that pruning where you have to actually continually work on the same thoughts and behaviors in order for your brain to start morphing into uh, that new system. 
of the uh, uh, with, with the pruning and the neuroplasticity. So you're saying with the slave owners is essentially it was probably known that this behavior wasn't going to change right away, that this was going to be a process where you actually, hey, this is it, all men should be created equal. But it wasn't going to happen immediately, but it was the start, at least the premise. And like you're saying, maybe a spiritually divine message that this is where we need to start over from. And it's probably not going to happen right away. However, at least we have some guidelines to, to work from. At least, you know, at least you know the answer to that question today, because they, over, they often ask this question, why, how did this man came up with this idea that man, all men were created equal while owning slaves? I'm claiming the book. This is what you call the meaning of actually what you're watching and recording in our generation, in our lifetime, the meaning of spiritually inspired thought. This is what this means. You know, men who had owned slaves their own their, their whole lives were starting their pruning process in their brain, and this is where it began. So well, that makes sense because it's like, why would that idea come to them if they're still owning slaves? I exactly. think that's your point on the divine, maybe spiritual message on that. Yeah, that's our that's my my first piece of evidence on how the transition from the old land to the new land. Yeah. So can you read the, uh, this is the, this is from the, from the, from declaration in the second paragraph of the declaration of independence. So this is what, uh, this is what is recorded. So you have a nation founded on the second most important command. So we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liber liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, so in this paragraph are two pieces of evidence that fell out of the Bible and landed here on earth, and this is the foundation of a new nation in this paragraph. So here, my, the, my, I am claiming that this is a, a political translation of the second most important command. We know what the second most important command. So in Matthew 22, 36, 40, Jesus was asked, was challenged by, uh, by the Jews about whether he knew the command. He knew what he was talking about. So teacher, so this is what uh, this is what he's recorded. Teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? And Jesus said to him, "Ye shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So in this paragraph of Declaration of Independence came this, uh, uh, the second most important command. This is a translation of the second most important command. This is why uh, the meaning of why that all men are created equal. What this means is that this, the founding fathers have recognized that all of the men are created equal, including the slaves at the time. What this means is that you cannot, you cannot treat anybody equal unless you love that neighbor. This is the meaning of, uh, of, uh, of, of this paragraph, of this paragraph in the Declaration of Independence. It means all men are equal. It means you, can, you can't treat, treat anybody else you know, unequal unless you love that neighbor. That, the, the the declaration does not the paragraph does not state which men are equal which colors are equal and whatnot it just says all men are created equal this is uh, another of those spiritually inspired phrase and straight fell out of the bible this is the meaning of what i say that all this this uh, this piece of evidence fell out of the bible and landed here on earth and landed in the declaration of america of the declaration of uh, independence of the americans so all men are created equal and this means that that you cannot treat anybody different. You cannot love your neighbor unless you think they're equal to you. The second piece of evidence that also fell out is included here. It has to do with the called the magnificence of the three. Uh, if you uh, if you're following along, the book is, is titled "The Magnificence of the, of the Three. The three involves every fundamental element uh, uh, God had designed uh, the universe with always surrounds always involves in number three for example i'm, I'm gonna quote i'm gonna bring you this example from the land uh god kicked israel off the land three times and the reason why because israel is also a fundamental element of design because god uh had chosen israel and his people so he has to be in three 
So Israel also has two sides. It's recorded as two sides. Israel has two sides in relationship with God. There's a, a negative side and a positive side. Today, they have also have two sides. There's a Zionist and a diaspora Jews. Diaspora Jews don't want nothing to do with, uh, with the land because they understood Leviticus 26. The Zionists say this is their land, but God had recorded Israel having the same same sites throughout the Bible. In uh, the first the first time he showed up on Mount Sinai when uh, when uh, when the Israelites uh, created a golden calf, and then the other and then uh, Moses came down and called the sons of Levi, and that's the first time that uh, that God showed Israel having two sides. And then he continued throughout the Bible. The second time they got into a civil war, they was divided into north and south. And God, then once they got into that civil war, God kicked them off the land, and they were done. God, and then uh, the Romans again in New Testament took them as slaves, and that was the third time. Jerusalem was burned twice, so that means, as I claim in the book, and as as I claim throughout that, there will there, there will be one there will be one more burning because it has to be in threes. So. So when uh, so list number three also fell was included here in the Declaration of Independence in this paragraph. So let me reread it to you. We hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. These that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are only three rights involved here. Only three, not two four or any other number but three life liberty and the pursuit of happiness so god has not only planted the uh second most important command in this paragraph but also planted magnificent other three so these are my two pieces of evidence support my claim that support my claim that god had planned all along to uh to uh to change to uh to replace the land that was once given to israel with a new land a new promised land of milk and honey for the gentiles and the American lands was it? So let's revisit there real quick, just as a side note, because you've talked about the significance of the number three showing up over and over in the Bible. Um, and there's got to be, I don't think it's any coincidence. So you had, for example, um, even when it comes down to the way that um, uh, our, uh, the way we perceive things cognitively, for example, uh, you could even go to something simple as uh, business marketing. They will go in threes because we tend to remember things in threes. You have birth, life, death. You have past, present, future. You have Jesus raising from the dead after three days. You have the structure of the atom that you discussed, which was the proton, neutron, electron. So, um, and you're going to go, I don't want to steal your thunder here. You're going to go on to the next uh, three. But three, for whatever reason, seems to show up over and over and over again. And I wanted to make that point because you're making that claim that, for example, if history tends to repeat itself and these uh, significant events come in threes, that's why you're claiming that if history re repeats itself, then Jerusalem should burn three times because it's burned twice already. Right. Okay. So, so now we have uh, the, the brain design was show uh, the American founding fathers started a new nation by revealing how God designed the brain. Second evidence is that in this Declaration of Independence, this was a, uh, uh, they ended up uh, uh, transforming the second most important command to find to, as, a, as a foundation of this new nation where men are all created equal. Third, is the magnificence of the three. There were only three rights that was planted in this uh, Declaration of, in of Independence. It was the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So the next fourth piece of evidence I'm using to support my claim is that coincidentally, the person who, uh, who was responsible for uh, including this, this, uh, this, uh, this phrase where all men are created equal was Thomas Jefferson, the who became the president and the, and he became the third president of the United States. It was one of those things that just fall, all these things just fall right in line of, uh, of uh, uh, to support my claims that, that God had assigned this new land and these new nations as his new nation to replace the old land with, which was uh, that had kicked Israel off. So, 
So those are the four pieces of evidence we have so far. So now, even though that uh, that this uh, that they started the the, the the new nation with this declaration, but it took time for them to uh, to uh, to adjust to it. You know, men by habits they have a hard time uh, pruning off uh, uh, those brains that uh, the neurons that that have already strengthened in your brain that has done your thinking for you. So generations came later, 80 years after the Declaration of Independence, people finally stood up and, and say, uh, this is not what we're about. You know, this slave thing is wrong, is evil. And I and I also mentioned it is in a book. For the Christians who stood up, they don't they don't have a monument for them. But this movement started by by Christians, you know, by other Christians. And these were, uh, uh, they started voicing their opinion and support us. These are, it didn't change by, it wasn't changed by black, but it was changed by other white people, by the white uh, Christians. They were the one responsible for changing this process uh, because the, the slaves didn't have the power and the force to, uh, to confront these people, but it was done by Christians. So here, God interfered through them and say, no, this is wrong. This is not what our nation was founded upon. And then that's when the civil war started, began. So when that civil war began, this was the first time in the history of the world that a nation had defended the second most important command and defended it with blood. America was that nation. This was a... Uh, so this is a uh, historical, this is, uh, I, I don't have the right words when to explain how, how big this was uh, of, uh, of, uh, of how monumental this act was, was done by the, uh, by the Americans because they effectively, the first, they were the first people to defend the second most important command and they defended with blood. And this was done by Christians. So those were Christians of all, we wish they were here, but those are uh, the Christians we need today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was a a, a, a very very uh, important piece of evidence for people to recognize is that uh, is that uh, it took the church. It was the church who, who eventually stood up and defended and stood up on behalf of God and say this was not the Christian nation that was founded uh, on anything else but the second most important command. So as predicted, as predictable, you know the. Uh, the violators of the second most important command lost that battle. The civil war, the southern, uh, southerners, the slave owners lost that war. So this is another uh, coincidence. Just like a third president in the United States, this thing fell right straight out of the Bible. This is my other piece of evidence, my fifth piece of evidence. Was the president who, uh, who, who, who defended uh, the second most important command, who led that battle? His name just coincidentally his name was Abraham, the same name that was uh, the founder, that was the forefathers of uh, of Israelites in uh, in the Bible, was Abraham. This president, just coincidentally, his name was Abraham, and he was the one who stood up and defended the second most important man. I mean, how I I I I I, I don't have the right words to, <laughs> to explain that how the meaning of that how go easy. Well, I think it, that it just goes to back up that they, <laughs> we don't. Uh, this this universe that we live in and what God's designed is we don't completely understand, but there are things that, uh, especially with uh, with numbers, names, synchronicities that just show up, and I think they're just little nuggets that are signs that hey, this is uh, there's some significance to this. So I'm not sure there's any real rationale behind it except for synchronicity as a part of this this universe that we live in. Yeah, spiritually inspired. Yeah spiritually inspired all these things are spiritually inspired is what i claim so and i i was mentioning to you on the way up here i can't remember where i saw it this was years ago but um you know who knows if it's true it, 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 i was reading something about the declaration of independence being divinely uh, inspired and the founding fathers had actually talked about it on the back end saying that yes we actually were inspired by this divinely even to the point and this is where i have no truth i have no evidence to back this up that they were saying that they actually 
were interacting with other entities ah. that actually inspired them to do the declaration. Now you could speculate on what the entities were, are they angels, aliens, who knows, but they did claim supposedly at some point that they had divine intervention on this. Interesting. Yeah. So as I explained the book, uh, uh, what this, what these founding fathers were going through during this point, how their brains were evolving at this point was exactly what Eve's brain went through as she went for knowledge. So whenever now I, I have a a, 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 pro, a picture of that, uh, an image of that uh, signing of that independence in, uh, in, uh, in my room. And uh, so now every time I look at it, I'm seeing Eve's brain. You know, every time it reminds me how Eve's brain was adjusting, uh, going for knowledge, you know. By the way, Eve did not commit any sin all the, all the whole story, uh, we're going through that down the line, but all Eve was doing was uh, the stories about how the human brain was designed to evolve, how we're supposed to get knowledge and develop the brain through emotions. And so whenever I look through this, uh, or now whenever I look at this picture from the sign of the independence, all I see is Eve now. I see her brain adjusting. This is what these men were doing from one stage to the next. So they, the brain was evolving and they recognized that what they were doing was wrong without even realizing it. All of them signed this thing and to make this declaration that all men are created equal while fighting for to, to, be, uh, to, hold, to hold their rights to own slaves. So, so this is what you call a spiritually inspired incident that, uh, that, uh, that marked the passage of, uh, of a transition from a new land to, from an old land to the new land of the, of the Marlin priest, for the Marlin priest. So this last piece of evidence is, uh, I didn't say this in the book. I didn't discuss this in the book because it, it came to me too late and I found out a little bit more too late and it makes sense. This is one of the questions people you normally ask. Uh, uh, a lot of atheists and, and, uh, and non-believers make fun of the Bible and God, they say, oh, there's a lot of slave owning in the Bible. There's a lot of people owning. How do you do that? How can God let, let other people own other people, that kind of stuff? And it makes sense. I understand it's a rational question, you know. So as I was thought through that, and then I started looking in, in a, uh, about the, the history of Israel in the Bible is that they were taken and enslaved, you know, three different times, the last time by the Romans. So when this happened here with the Civil War, I finally figured out that this officially marked the end of the slave and slave in Israel in the Bible. And then the evidence is that it turned out that a lot of Jews were also from Africa. There was a lot of communities in, uh, in, uh, in Africa that were Israelites. So there's a good possibility that a lot of them were included in this enslavement, uh, mm -hmm. the bringing of the slaves from Africa. A lot of them may have been part of that, uh, may have been included in that, in that enslavement process. So I didn't claim this in the book, but now that uh, I look at it more, that the, 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 the enslavement that was allowed in the Bible officially ended here because when Romans took Israel, they never ended that enslavement. They were still scattered throughout Europe and they were persecuted and all that stuff throughout their history while in Europe. But I'm now claiming that that enslavement in the Bible was officially ended here in this civil war with, uh, over, over slavery. It's the first time it was done, and that's why th this is the really the first time it was done historically, I think. And it was done based on the premise, based on the second most important command. So those are my pieces of evidence for this for this uh, for this uh, for this show uh, of how the new land was formed following uh, uh, both the Bible. Well, mostly, most of the evidence is from the Bible and how, how God had planted other evidence, including the magnificent of the, of the three with Abraham and the president who became the third president who just happened to be the person who drafted up uh, the, 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 this, this, this uh, paragraph where all men are supposed to be cre created equal. So since we're on the, uh, we talked about the, uh, the threes and we're talking about the land, this being the, the third land here what what is your take on this we covered a little bit in the last episode about 
you know, with everything going on in the elections and, and everything, are is is this going to be a sign that potentially, if this prophesizes a history repeats itself, that America will eventually burn as well? I mean, when you because you think World War One, World War Two, World War Three, that would be kind of intuitive. Um, what's your take on what may happen based on it, that your discussion so far in the Bible with America becoming the new land? I didn't. I didn't discuss it in the Bible because I was kind of afraid of uh, because it would make cause, you know, panic with people. But America is a second promised land, but because God does everything in threes, means there should be a third land. God's yeah, I'm sorry, I said third. third so land. yeah, like, so there should be a third land. There should right? be a third yeah. promised land. You know, we don't know what that where that land is. I don't know where who how God's going to be done. But so far, you know, the way it's been going. We've been violating the Ten Commandments for a long time. You know, even today, we're violating. This is exactly what God, why, why God kicked Israel off the land because they were violating the Ten Commandments. You know, today, uh, you hear Christians talking about, uh, you know, we can kill these people, you know, because we're supporting Israel and God's gonna bless us. This is people who claim to be Christians. Nowhere in the New Testament did Jesus say anything like that. He was supposed to go kill people and then I'm going to bless you. None of that. This is a violation of Ten Commandments. But, you know, it's not your fault. But now we're coming out. I got the evidence that the tree of life is the commandments. This is why you can't violate it. You cannot violate the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments was really simple. Treat your neighbors like you want to be treated. That's all there is. Just fear God and treat your neighbors like you want to be treated. That's all there is in commandments, and there's a reason for it. It's not about going to heaven, but about improving our relationship here on earth. We improve our relationship here on earth, our brains get developed, and we improve our thinking. You know, we don't know, we haven't even reached, uh, I don't think we are close reaching in uh, the ability in our brain, but in order to be able to do that, we have to fix our relationship. We cannot be going around murdering people and killing each other. That's a violation of the Ten Commandments. And I said, Psyche, God made it simple to Israel in Leviticus 26. Once you violate the commandments, you're off the land. These are your conditions. And this is what America must also be concerned about now because we will be doing a lot of killings for the last, the last 20 years. And this killing has nothing to do with America. It has to do with keeping this land. This land that God kicked Israel off three times and Jerusalem burned twice. You ask yourself that question. The question you ask is, why didn't God interfere when uh, the foreign armies went in there and took Israel as slaves and burned Jerusalem to the ground twice? Why didn't he? Because the plan has always been for Israel to go out to the world. The world belongs to them. That's what God said. And this is an example. You know, there's a, 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 a president of, uh, uh, what's that country having a war with uh, Russia? Ukraine? The country that's had going at it with Russia right now, uh Ukraine? Yeah, Ukraine. That uh that president is also a Jew. Mexico just elected a president. You know what she is? She's also a Jew. This is the meaning of what God meant that all families on earth can be blessed through Abraham. This is what this is exactly the meaning of it, that the Jews gonna be spread out in the world and this is some of the blessings that's gonna come through. That these people are gonna end up as leaders in these countries, and that's exactly what happened in Mexico. This is an example, a perfect example of what the blessings that God meant. God did not want you to kill people for for these people. They want you. It was meant to be that the Jews gonna be priests, and when they come to you, they introduce God to you. That's the blessing. It's you knowing God and knowing how He designed you, and that's where we are. We should be thinking of today instead of. Uh, of killing and people murdering and people over this land and this land i mean god made it so simple in the record i'm not even sure why we have problems with it today but god made it simple once you violate the commandments you're off the land and this is why the american lands is important because god had to replace it because it's consistent with assigning gentiles as his new priest because israel had failed that job well, we re re repeat it over and over and prove that we learn the hard way, humans do. So, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. You reap what you sow, and we've been doing it all wrong for so long that uh, the awareness that you're creating, I think, is what's important because a lot of people don't think of it this way. They don't even dissect the Bible the way that you've dissected it, which I think is a great perspective. And whether it's true or going to come to fruition, it's just 
Bear something to look at from a different perspective. Bear in mind. And we could have easily have faded out of doing these episodes because some of it kind of blends together, bleeds in, and some of it gets a little bit redundant. But I can understand, especially because I truly believe that this this all came to you, uh, d divinely inspired. And the reason I say that is there's no reason that somebody, no offense to you, obviously, but with your background, how would you, how do you write a book mm -hmm. that is now considered an academic book by somebody that didn't have a high school education that came over and spent 27 years in prison and get out and go, well, I want to write a book on God. I'm not sure what to write about. And then boom, this happens. So I think that you, what you really wanted to do is get this documented. And so that people can go back and be like, hey, history tends to repeat itself. And this interpretation, if it does come to fruition, it's like, well, it was all kind of laid out. So it's the awareness more than anything that I think you're creating here. It's not a judgment call on any particular race, creed, color. It's this well, is what the facts. Bible said, and here's a different way to look at it. Yes, because we have never, we have never, I have never experienced peace in the world, and neither do you. Neither, uh, these are all our generations alive today. We've always had wars. That's what we're looking for. I'm looking for. I want some kind of peace. You know, uh, we're now afraid that Russians most likely going to nuclear, you know, send nuclear on us, and, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about because it's. Uh, there are a bunch of other stuff surrounding this uh, today that uh, there are countries forming their own dollar. You know, these are, you know, there's big industries, that, for example, Boeing, an American icon industry, and it's failing. You say Boeing? Yeah. yeah. It's failing. Uh, these are little things. They're little things, but they all together, they will come to something. So we're going to end up losing something, and uh, I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but. We cannot keep violating the Ten Commandments. It's just that simple. We cannot keep violating the commandments. If you believe God is real, then do not violate the commandments. Especially now you know that the commandments is the tree of life. You cannot keep violating this thing. We talked about this the other day in um, in a group that I'm in. It's actually a church group, but it's really more of a life group that we all get together and kind of have community. And it's co-ed, and there's, I don't know, there's maybe 10 or 12 of us, but... We had talked a lot about, because um, we don't go, we don't dive deep into scripture, but we just talk about kind of life events going on. And all of us have gone through challenges in that group. And it's a, it's been good because a lot of people that go to church, they just kind of do their own thing and sit in the corner thinking that everybody else around them is perfect that goes to church and they're the only ones having problems. So it's great because our group just opens up to each other and we're very vulnerable. It's like, no, we're all going through something. That's the whole point of being here. Let's talk about it. And we had talked about like... Um, you know, you hear that you hear sin and uh, there's, you know, the semantics behind the word sin. We're, we're used to relating a definition of, you know, even a connotation of, you know, some a preacher talking like, See, you sinned again, you're a sinner, you're going to hell. Well, that type of stuff is we talked about sin being missing the mark, which is technically the definition. And you can do a lot of things right in life. But if you're separated from God, which is essentially what you're talking about with Killing other people, that is not being integrated nope. with God. That's a, directly against God's commands. That's sin. And when you're living in sin, like you could even do like you and I had talked about this. When I talk about going through recovery with alcoholism, I wasn't a bad person, but I was. I didn't have any God in my life. I was just a guy that went out thinking that you lived in this 3D material world with your physical mind, and you had to grind and hustle, and you play, work hard, play hard, and then mm -hmm. you die maybe even young, and you go on the ground and the worms eat you. And that was kind of my philosophy. Yeah, well, that's pretty. That's there's not a lot of hope there, and that's separate from God. And what happened? It was almost like God was like, "Okay, you can do that. You, in fact, you can do it for a full forty years." And now it's caught up with you. You can run, but you can't hide. You don't know me. You never have, at least in this lifetime. So here's what I'm going to put you through. And you don't have any resentment when you look back because you go, that had to happen because it's bound to happen. And the people that I was with in treatment, it was the same thing. It's like, that's why it's such a spiritual program. It's like, if you want to get better, if you want to get sober and live See a decent your life, you're going to have to develop your brain and get some spirituality because if you don't, it's almost impossible. And I've known people in treatment, this isn't a judgment call, but it's just, once again, let's call it spade a spade, that they get sober, but they don't do it spiritually. They just follow maybe the 12 steps, but they don't integrate any sort of uh, higher power in their life. And what they end up doing, quite honestly, is they end up being sober assholes. Like they repeat the same behaviors that they were doing when they were using. Mm -hmm. They just aren't 
using anymore. So it's like, well, what'd you do? You, you, you did, you're not drinking or you're not using drugs, but you're still exemplifying the same behaviors. What's the point of that? Yeah. It's uh, yeah. The, the brain was designed to be able to adjust, you know, just like we discussed about the atom, the brain was designed the same way. The atom adjusted and changed elements. That's the same thing with the brain. And, uh, and, uh, one of the best example I discussed in the book and God did it in a massive scale. It can happen to us. I think it may have happened to us from because of uh, Declaration of Independence, but he did it to the Romans. You know, people always say uh, Roman fell, Roman didn't fall. All God did was it made Roman an example of brains of of, uh, of plasticity. How the brain was, uh, was designed to adjust. And He will make examples out yeah, of he made the civilizations, of societies, people in general. That's exactly what He did to the Romans. So the Romans didn't fall. What Romans did was he changed his nature and became a religion, became a church. I guess what? It's a billion, <laughs> it's a, it became a billion member nation of Romans. It became the Roman Catholics. Yeah. So that's how, because they messed around in, uh, at the time God, uh, God returned, he messed, they messed around in, in, in Jerusalem and uh, burned Jerusalem. So that's what God did was uh, change this whole nation. We think that God, that Rome fell, but Roman, the Rome, Rome nation, all, all they did was change its nature, change its status, and became a, a, a religion. So they, that's why they began the Christian religion was a, was a, was, was a result of, a, of how the praying that the leaders adjusted. They adjusted themselves for survival purposes, and they see what's best for them, and they adjusted and became the church. So they began today, they, the biggest, the biggest, one of the biggest nations today is the Romans. You know, because uh, they they came under a different flag. It's called the Roman Catholics, but that's how they, how God uh, made an example of how the brain is supposed to adjust. You know, for bigger purposes. You know, so it, it's it's one of those things, unique things about the Bible that there's evidence. There's the people claim there's no evidence that uh, that there was a cruc crucifixion. I'm submitting that as one of the pieces of evidence that how how God messed how the Romans messed around in Jerusalem. And end up changing themselves, you know, by uh, it was the biggest re act of revenge, revenge God had done to a nation, and it was done to the Romans. And uh, and uh, I I can't help today. I yesterday uh, a couple of days ago I see now uh, how the American navies and the Air Force send send their planes over Lebanon and and Gaza, and and in my mind I'm like this is how the Romans used to think, you know, the arrogance, you know, you're powerful, you have all these weapons, you have you're invincible. Nobody can, nobody yeah. can deal with you. God dealt with the Romans and changed himself. You know, and there's a biggest act of revenge in the history of mankind. They just, we just don't, don't know we did, but that's exactly what it was. Arrogance always ends up biting you in the ass, man. You got to have some humility, and that's what God teaches over and over again. That's what Jesus is. Yep. This guy is a call himself Christians, but they keep doing this stuff. This is not, you know, how do you think God's going to react to you? Constantly, it's called calling God's name in vain. That's an example of calling God's name in vain. And that's one of the unforgivable sin, I believe. <laughs> I, if, I, if I read the paper, the, the book right, it's one of the unforgivable uh, sins is you constantly use Jesus' name, but you do this stuff. You kill these babies. Oh my God, the horror. That's horrible looking at those images today. Well, it's all very interesting. I'm actually glad that we've kind of been a little bit redundant because the material, even though I skimmed through your book and I didn't get a chance to go super deep into it, like the material, once I hear it more and more, it starts coming together um, because it is pretty deep. But I can see what's in the Harvard Library because somebody was willing to break it down. Oh. And you've had n numerous people read this that'll do down their book reviews. And man, they go in depth about how th this is, a, you, you, are, you articulate it very well. And I remember talking to you about when you finished it, because you and I were talking about how we both wrote our books. And when we go back and read our books, we're like, man, I don't even really remember writing that particular chapter. Or, that was the same thing with me. And when you go back and read your book, you really don't even recall writing a lot of the information because it's flowing from that infinite field of intelligence or the spirit or the zero point or whatever you want to call it. But that information will flow if it's, if it's meant to. And that's why I think there's a lot of validity behind it if you actually logically break it down. 
Yeah, all I remember yeah. is the song. Like you're in this you're song, right? Well, yeah, you're in the song, and every yeah. little bit of information, he just like it opens up for you, and you man, can how see fast did door. time go by? Like I would look down after writing a, a chapter or two, and like five hours had gone yeah. by. I thought it was like an hour and a half. Yeah, two you're, hours. you're in your own little yeah. world, and you're in the song, and I remember how tired I was. That's all I remember, you know. And uh, you know when I. We were talking about earlier about how tired I I become. I I got very tired, you know, because uh, I'm doing YouTube channels, trying to get a social media, trying to bring awareness to the book. And last week, I last two weeks, I became very tired. Like I was starting to get feel burned out. And uh, and then and then last week, uh, last week or earlier, yeah, last week, and Friday I think, and then they. I Google the internet just to see if, uh, uh, where the books is sold at. And then there pops up Harvard bookstore. That's your inspiration, man. And Damn, I'm like, science. this is how, you know, the truth is, this is exactly how it's been for me doing this journey. Like I'm, I'm about to give up and then God sent something, you know, it's like, uh, I didn't even, we didn't discuss it before, but I have chronic back pains and, uh, all my, all my knees, my ankles got arthritis, my spine, I have chronic, chronic pain every day. And then uh, I got tired of uh, of, uh, of doing uh, smoothies. And I say, oh, I gotta get some pills, get some concentrated fruits and vegetables pills, and I found them. I ordered these things, and all of a sudden, I got no more pain today. I'm pain free. Like I can walk without pain today. And this is kind of things that's been- Man, if we had sponsors, me. we could bring up the name. I started talking, I started taking that stuff too, man. I took some this morning. That stuff is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So now my, my, my mother-in-law took them. She has after rise. He goes, oh my goodness. I, I only feel pain when I get up. Oh, whatever, give him a free plug. Body. It's energy bits off yeah. of Amazon. Those things are good. It's like a chlorella yeah, this, and all sorts uh, of natural stuff. This stuff was, uh, but this is kind of example of how, of how my relationship with God you know, it's been since I've been on this journey. Like I have about to give up and then something pops up. I need to do this, I need this. And God showed me, it's been, since I've been working on this project, my life is tough and tiring, but life is, is, is made simple for me. You know, I started thinking about that the other day and I was, and then we got to wrap up here, but the, uh, I was th thinking about when you start getting in terms of thinking in any sort of lack, whether it's health, whether, the, whether it's money, whether it's just relationships, whatever's going on in your life, you have to always remember, like you've always had enough, like you, you've always yep. been taken care of. So what, what makes you think that you're not going to be taken care of this next time around? That's a very right? good point. So that has been my life. I've always been taken care of, yeah. you know, I've always, even though I went to prison, but we're always I, thinking about I've, getting more yeah, instead of just I've being grateful been, for what we already have i've That's always been taken care of but i didn't find i didn't really understand until after i wrote this book why god why i've always felt that presence beside me like a lot of incidents i should have been stabbed by people or you know but god is always there's always that, that there's always that something blocking this event from going down and i've always and, and until uh, after i read i wrote a book and i finally understood you know after I read uh, the whole thing of it was puppies, and I fully understand how I walk, that how I walk, and there was always somebody beside me. I've always been taken care of. I've been hungry, but I've always been kid taken care of from uh, while I was in this, uh, while I was I, in the hole I ducked myself into. <laughs> Well, dude, with our backgrounds, both of us could have been long gone a long yep, time ago. Yep. So we're all we're still here for a reason, my man. No coincidence. No well, let's coincidence. go ahead and wrap up. You'd lead us out in the prayer, and then we'll uh, we'll kill it for next show. Thank you for listening in. Uh, we'll see you in the next show. Next show is about uh, oh, this is this is gonna be good because it's about how God how God uh, assigned America to recreate the Ark of the Covenant. This is big, big time. So it will will end this series with that show next week. So. Here's say a short prayer. Thank you, our Father in heaven, for your spirit being here with us. Ask for your spirit to lead us and uh, protect us and uh, prepare the nation. Even though they've been living in sin, uh, they just don't fully understand what they give up, what they are, who they are, and what their mission is. And uh, the word is starting to get out. And uh, thank you for, the, for all those uh, spreading the word out about, about this book, about what you showed us. And ask for your spirit to continue to work with us and bless these nations. We get ready for the election. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time. When you serve others, you serve yourself. If you like the videos, uh, go ahead and like and share and go back and watch the uh, previous episodes if you want to get caught up. We'll see you next time.